Hello and welcome to this week's lecture. Today we'll be discussing two very important topics. First, we'll be examining learning styles and how you cater your academic experience to your individual learning style. After that, we'll be exploring academic portfolios and how they can help you succeed in your academic career, and better yet, later in your professional career. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Understanding how you have developed as a learner is critical to your success as you begin your learning journey toward completing your college degree. Recognizing how you learn and how you process information can be identified as your learning style. Learning styles are rooted in theories of learning. Let's consider a quick overview of three major theories in this area. Howard Gardner's theory is labeled multiple intelligence. David Kolb's theory is based on the premise that learning is on a continuum and experience plays a huge part. And Malcolm Knowles is noted for andragogy, looking at the self-directed adult learner. Gardner's theory is rooted in the principle that each individual has multiple intelligences. However, where an individual is comfortable or confident, they will use that intelligence most often to learn. Currently, Gardner's theory has identified eight intelligences. However, others are being defined. Kolb's model of learning said that learning could be seen on a continuum, and that a person would move through the continuum over time. As a person would come to prefer a learning style, they would rely on that style and use it more and more. Kolb's continuum is built on four premises: concrete experiences, reflective observation, abstract conceptualization, and active experimentation. Concrete experience represents being involved in a new experience. Reflective observation revolves around watching others. Or developing observations about own experience, the continuum moves toward an abstract conceptualization, which creates theories to explain observation, and then one moves into an active experimentation stage, which involves the use of theories to solve problems or make decisions, and the cycle continues. Malcolm Knowles coined the term andragogy to refer to adult learners recognizing that adults learn differently than children. His theory stated five principles of adult learners. First, they are autonomous and self-directed as learners. Second, they are most often goal-oriented. Next, adults are relevancy-oriented or problem-centered. Our world is ordered by consistent challenges or problems. Adults are practical and problem solvers. We are learning by consistently finding the solutions to our everyday problems. Just think of all the problems or situations you had to solve just today at work or with your family schedule. And finally, adults have life experiences that can add critical components to the learning experience. Simply stated, adult learning should focus on the process learning. What we can take away from these theories, whichever one resonates with you, is that learning is a set of processes that involves cognition. How one acquires knowledge and skills, conceptualization, how one processes information, and effective, how one is motivated with values and emotional preferences. Ultimately, identifying our learning style requires investigative skills. We must observe, listen, focus, experiment, and learn. For you to completely understand your development, it is important for you to know how God created you to learn, concentrate, remember, and interact with information. Some have labeled this a learning style profile. You can begin to build your own learning style profile by answering the following questions in the various categories: mind styles, how do you communicate what you know, environmental preferences, how do you concentrate. Modalities. How do you remember? Cognitive processing. How do you interact with information? Multiple intelligences. How do you show you are smart? Let's begin and see what answers you get. The first question we need to answer is: How do you communicate what you know? Consider these two principles before you answer the questions. This chart categorizes four mind styles. Concrete sequential, 
abstract sequential, abstract random, and concrete random. Do you see yourself in a category? Do you see others? Spouse, children, co-workers, parents? What are some of the comparisons and contrasts you can make? This mind styles chart can be very helpful as you begin to define your learning style profile. But remember, anytime you use categories with people, use them as a tool and use them flexibly. They are just a piece of the puzzle. Another layer to how the mind works is in what environment does work get done? The question that you should ask is, how do you concentrate? Some elements to consider are the time of day, the lighting, the temperature, and the design. Some considerations to help answer this question. What time of day are you most energetic? Are you a morning person versus a night owl? What intakes help you to study better? Do you need to have something to eat or drink while you are studying? What kind of light is best for your concentration? Is it a bright light or a soft or dim lighting? What study design works best for you? Is it a formal design with a desk and chair, or is it an informal setting? And what temperature helps you to feel invigorated? Does it need to be cold versus hot? Answering these questions will help you put this piece of the puzzle into your learning style profile. The next question to answer in the puzzle is, how do you remember, or your modality for learning? The three categories to consider for answering this question are visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. For the visual learner, seeing is important. For the auditory learner, the verbal is important. And for the kinesthetic learner, movement is important. Did you learn anything revealing about your learning modality? Rating your cognitive process, or how do you interact with information, is the next consideration. There are two considerations, global and analytic. Reflect on how you give directions. Do you give very specific details, or do you tend to give more of an overview? This would be a strong indicator of which characteristics best describes you for your cognitive process. The last question in building your learning style profile is built on Howard Gardner's work of multiple intelligence. The question we are striving to answer is, how do you show you are smart? What intelligences do you connect with easier? What intelligences are a challenge for you? Discovering who you are as a learner is a powerful component to your development and can be a strong tool for your success as you begin your college career. Philippians 1, 3 through 6 reminds us God is working in us from the beginning until the end. All right, then. Now that we've covered learning styles, let's switch gears just a bit and move on to discussing academic portfolios and the role they'll play in your academic career here at San Diego Christian College. For decades, artists, photographers, architects, designers, and writers in search of work have used portfolios to showcase their abilities and their style. People in business and industry are rediscovering portfolios that can help them to fit into the current work environment in which more individuals are acting as independent contractors, selling their skills and capabilities, working whenever they can fill an employer's needs. Employees are finding that portfolios can help them with career transitions because few can expect to work for one employer for an entire career. College professors and career advisors are now realizing that the process of developing a portfolio can be an important learning tool for students to help them assess their learning and to compare it to the employer's need for skilled, capable employees. And students are discovering that portfolios offer a better way to demonstrate their work experience that adds value to the learning experience of their schooling. So what is a portfolio? A portfolio is a visual representation of your abilities, skills, capabilities, knowledge, qualities. It represents your potential. Physically, it's a collection of things, artifacts, that represent work-related events in your life. But remember that you may have developed skills that are not work-related that you should still consider important. You may have gained these skills while outside the classroom, while pursuing hobbies, team sports, or volunteer activities or simply pursuing your interests. The portfolio provides evidence of your potential, 
by demonstrating what you accomplished in the past. So what makes up a portfolio? One size does not fit all. Because those skills, qualities, and knowledge can come from so many different places, even the portfolios of twins would be drastically different from each other. Self-assessment is important. An effective portfolio is a visual representation of all your strengths. This means that you can present both your skills, abilities, what you can do, and your characteristics, qualities, that speak to work style, how you do it. Thus, you need to know what you do well and what you want to do. Self-assessment is a necessary first step. Even though there are similarities, an academic portfolio is not a professional career portfolio. The academic portfolio tends to focus on documenting the process of all learning that has occurred. Students are encouraged to include early efforts of your academic accomplishments to compare to later, more accomplished learning. For example, written artifacts that range from poor to excellent, so the student's learning and improvement can be seen. When you are focusing on an academic portfolio, this is a good practice. A professional portfolio focuses on the potential for accomplishing future, specific work, not necessarily the learning process. It assumes that learning has happened. However, the same skills, such as communication, critical thinking, problem solving, and global awareness, are common to demonstrate past learning accomplishments, as well as the potential for accomplishing the future opportunities of an employer. So what should go into my academic portfolio? Artifacts. An artifact is any object or an item that can represent your accomplishments and qualities in a tangible form. In the same way archaeology reconstructs a civilization from artifacts, a portfolio reconstructs your academic life from artifacts. In both cases, the artifacts are fragments that represent pieces of the whole. Artifacts may include work products that you completed as an assignment in a class, or you may wish to include reports, computer printouts, graphics, handouts, published articles, etc. Artifacts may be something you've created to summarize or to represent things you have completed. They may be a summary of evaluations from a report, a project that demonstrates your organization, or a visual of something you created to show your contribution to a report. It could include a statement of your philosophy, or you could symbolize your philosophy by using an image or developing a collage of images. It could include a photo of you accepting an award, particularly if the award is an object designed to sit on a shelf. Again, one size does not fit all. Because those skills, qualities, and knowledge you develop can come from so many different strengths, each individual's portfolio will be unique to him or her.